Hey y'all, it's Brian, the Rambling Tech. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install Ubuntu Desktop onto your Proxmox server. Now, if you don't got Proxmox set up and you just wanna try out Ubuntu Desktop, you absolutely can do that. This will show you how to do it. You'll just have to skip over the Proxmox, how to set up in Proxmox, but basically you'll go to the same website, download an ISO, and then use a tool like Rufus to burn the ISO to a USB stick and plug it into your computer or whatever, um, whichever device you're gonna do that. But let's roll into it and I will show you how to get the um, Ubuntu desktop ISO. So I'll see you on my desktop. All right, y'all, so now we're here back on my desktop. So let's go ahead and open up Chrome and I'm going to go to Ubuntu.com. And I will put the link in the description below so that way y'all can get there. Um, once we get to Ubuntu desktop or Ubuntu.com, um, we're going to go here to downloads and we're going to click Ubun get Ubuntu desktop. And you will scroll down to Mono and download 2204.2. So you'll click that. And if it doesn't start downloading, you should be able to just hit download now. I will um, go ahead and download this and once it's installed, I'll see you on my Proxmox server. So I'll see you in a little bit. So now that we've got that installed or downloaded, we're going to upload our first ISO onto our Proxmox server. So if you set it up the same way as me, you will have a uh, network drive that's set up as ISOs. That is where I'm going to put mine. But if you were not, if you did not have a uh, network drive that's set up right now, that is okay. You can actually put them in local PBE, which is where your ISOs and templates will be stored. And then my VM will be running on my um, RAID 10 SSDs. But if you did not have RAID 10 SSDs, you can actually you can run it on the local LVM. So let's go ahead and get that uploaded. I want to upload my first one. Well, I've already uploaded one. I have a bunch of server in here, but I'm all going to upload the Ubuntu desktop. So I'm going to go here, file and select where I downloaded my file and it is in the ISO. So I'm going to take the one that says desktop, click open. It is four gigs, so it might take it a minute. So we're going to fast forward through this again. Twiddling their thumbs and going doop, doop, doop. All right. So I just want to come right in real quick and slow it down. So once you get right here, you are not complete yet. We are going to wait for one more thing. It is actually copying it to, so we uploaded it. So now it's actually got to copy it so that it'll be mounted and it will have it on file. So we're going to give it a few more minutes and it should be done. A few minutes later. All right, y'all. So now that we've got task okay, we are complete. We can go ahead and click the X button. And we're going to jump back over here to PBE. So right now we have no VMs installed. There are actually two ways to install a VM. You can right click right here where it says PBE, create VM, or come up here and do create VM up here. I like using the button up top. So we're going to leave it as the node PBE. If you did have a cluster, you'd be able to pick between the ones that you want to put it on. But where we only have one right now, that is okay. This VM ID right here, this is how Proxmox knows what the VM is. So the name is for us to read, the ID is for Proxmox to read. So the one thing is if you do plan on setting up a cluster, so having multiple Proxmox server working together in a high availability or anything like that, you are going to want to remember that you have a different you need to have a different scheme for each one of them because if you try to migrate it between the other ones it will mess it up if they're the same id so i am actually going to take this one up to 500 just because it sounds good and i don't think i have any of that in my network and then we're going to do the name for it is ubuntu you cannot have spaces in there so i'm going to do dash okay, desktop that way we know what it is and we're going to click um, down here where it says advanced, make sure this is clicked. It does make some things that we can set up later. We're going to click next. The ISO, so we're going to where we clicked on or we uploaded it. So if you upload it to local, you click on local, upload mine to ISO. I'm going to click right here. 
and find the desktop AMD. I want to leave this as Linux and this is good. we we'll go next. Leave all this as default disk. So I'm going to use my RAID 10, my SSDs, and I am going to give this 180 gigs. Yeah, we'll do 180 gigs on this. I'm going to click next. CPU, I am actually going to give it four CPU or four cores. Next, I want my minimum um, RAM to be two gigs, but I want my maximum to be four. So how to do that is you're actually gonna go up here, this top one um, where it says memory, that is the max RAM that it will use. The minimum RAM is the minimum. So I'm gonna put in 496 for this and then change this to 2048. And you do have to put them in the thousand. So 498 is four gigs, 248 is two gigs, 124 is one gig. Click next. We're gonna clear all this as default. We're gonna use the um, VMBR zero. We're gonna click confirm and start after created. So let's give that a minute to go ahead and get started. All right, so once you see over here that it said it's got a green button and 500 Ubuntu server, you actually click on that. And if you click right here, this is actually gonna give you a console. You can do try install or console. If you right click on it and bring up console, it will actually bring up a bring up a full screen. And if you don't click the enter button, it will just go to try or install. And now it is launching its installer wizard. You can try Ubuntu, which is basically, like I said, it will just start running and there's nothing that will be saved. But we're gonna do install. So we'll click right here on where it says install. And we're gonna keep English um, if you are in a different language, you can actually select any language that you want. And we're going to do continue. I'm going to do a normal install and install third-party software and graphics for hardware. Um, we'll go ahead and start install this. And continue. So on this step, we're going to erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu. So this would be, this is a clean install. So if you did have anything there, it would just wipe it. Um, but now we're gonna click install. And it's gonna tell us once again that it's gonna make two part or two partitions for us. So we're gonna click continue. We're gonna select our time zone. So it should automatically default in your time zone. Uh, verify that you are in that time zone and that is correct for me. So I'm gonna click continue. And what is your name? RT. And our super secret squirrel password. We got it right. And require password for login. And then click continue. So let's go ahead and let this install. I will fast forward through all this. Now that has finally um, gotten done installing. There is a part right there where it did ask, it was trying to re re retrieve some files. I just went ahead and skipped that. We will deal with that and do updates later. So now that it's done installing, I'm gonna go ahead and restart it. So let's bring it back up. So, give it just a few minutes. So you'll just click enter there, um, give us any issues. All right, so now that we are in here, it's gonna say 
It's gonna show my user. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. As long as I type that password in correctly. All right, so now we are good. We are on our Proxmox server. Kind of got some stuff right here. Let's go through it next, done. And there is one thing that I do wanna do before we end this video is I'm gonna actually open up my terminal and we're going to actually shut this down for one second. So we will do sudo shutdown. And it's gonna ask for that password. So shutdown is normally scheduled for about one minute out. So let's go ahead and let this shut down. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna show you kind of what we are going to do. So I want to, if you come right here and go to PVE or go to summary, if you look right here, it says no guest agent configured. I wanna make that so it is configured so it'll show me the IP address of this device. And the way you do that is actually go in here and go to QEMU guest agent. And right now it is at default and disabled. So we're going to click on this and go up here to edit. And we are gonna use Q, Q E M U. And basically what, we're, basically what we're waiting on is for this server to shut down. Once it shuts down, this will go into effect. So give it just a few more seconds. So now after we did click start, you notice that it is say enabled. So we're gonna wait for this to come up. And I'm actually going to launch it here in the big screen. We're gonna log in. I'm gonna go put our super secret squirrel in password in. Um, with this kind of delayed system. But anyways, so let's go ahead and open up terminal. Now that we've got terminal open, we are going to put in one command and that is going to be sudo apt get dat apt dash git install qemu dash Get yeah, agent. It's gonna ask for our super secret squirrel password. So if you are trying to install anything and you try to install it and it tells you you don't have permissions, that is a Linux way to protect itself. And what you would do, especially in Ubuntu, on things like that, when you set up a user, it will automatically give you pseudo rights. Pseudo rights basically make you a super user but you don't have all of the super users it's a little bit more secure so better than logging in as root log in as, as a user that does have sudo and put, press y for yes and we're gonna let this install all right so now that that is installed we are going to, just to make sure that it is installed, we're gonna do SYS or system CTL start QEMU dash, nope. Agent and press enter. I'm gonna ask for my password because it wants to get authenticated and make sure that I can do this. We're gonna, and then we are actually going to make this so that it all, always comes up and it's always enabled and always launched every time that this server or this desktop boots up. So we're gonna click in here. We're gonna do the same thing. We can click the actual up button. And if we come back here to the start, delete all this out, and we're gonna go in able. Now we'll put these um, commands down in the link below. 
But now that we've done that, we're going to press enter. Okay, there we go. So now it should be it is up and going. And what we can actually do is if we come back over here, this should be working. So now we have our IP address of this device. Come in here and look in more and it will give you a little bit more information. So we have the loopback IP address and then our DHCP IP address. So that is how we install Ubuntu desktop on our Proxmox server. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. Comment below what you'd like me to do next or what you'd like me to try to work on next. And I'll see you in the next one.